So now that the plumbing is pretty much done and out of the way for the meth project, uh, now it's time for this stuff. Ugh. I don't know, this actually shouldn't be too bad, but who knows. That's what we're gonna get started in this video. So when it comes to the installation of uh, this controller, it has what, 10? Uh, no, 12. 12 wires in the harness. I'm pretty much using almost all of these and um, I'm not gonna use all of them initially, but eventually. So I have a bunch of wires to figure out. And I've already, I know this, this looks just, what is this? But this is basically my reference of this whole thing and how I'm running it. So like, this is the front of the car, here's the engine, here's the rear of the car, here's the trunk. So I'm thinking I'm gonna mount the um, controller somewhere under the dash. And the reason being, I have to be able to plumb a line from the engine to the port here for the map sensor that's built into this thing. If I put this somewhere back here and, uh, you know, somewhere up under the dash and mount it, you know, it's kind of like a, I'll just have to get under there and set it and just forget it. You know, I'm not going to be really messing with the knobs too much once I get it right. But if I put it up under there, then I can use the grommet that goes through the firewall to feed all my wires and the uh, line to the boost port here um, for the map. That's what I'm thinking is to put this up under here somewhere, which also I think gives me a good advantage for I'm just keeping the wiring nice and simple. So really the only really long wires that I'm gonna have running are the ones that are gonna go to the trunk. For those, I'm just gonna probably run them along the factory harness that goes through you know, here to the back. So that's not gonna be that big of a deal. So I'm just kind of taking a look at the, oh, the harness here and everything. I gotta see where everything's gonna be, so. It's all twisted up, I gotta untangle it. Oh, that was all that needed done. Okay, cool. So yeah, I got this, all these nice wires to go messing with. So it's gonna be these four wires running to the trunk, and I definitely have more than enough harness to do that. So I've spent the last hour, <laughs> doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it's been that long, just going through this harness and breaking out all the different pieces that I'm going to be using and I'm not going to be using. And I'm just going through and just organizing all the wires and putting them together. So it just makes, you know, routing everything easy and clean. So a little bit of prep work here. I'm sitting in the car, baking in the heat. It's like 80 degrees. I have sweat running down my back into my butt crack. Oh man, wiring used to be very, uh, what's the word, intimidating at one point. I used to hate it. I don't mind doing wiring projects now. And you know, like the more you do with cars and the more bigger projects you, you take on, simple stuff like this doesn't seem as intimidating as it once did. After taking an engine out and apart and putting one back together and all that, wiring don't seem too bad now, does it? Just imagine paying someone hourly to do this work. That's why it's expensive, because it takes so much time. Very time consuming. And it's all stuff we can do ourselves. So this is the four wires going to the trunk, all nice and neat. So, um, yeah, I can just run them straight back along the factory harness. So that's all good there. And I still have, I did all of that and I still have all of these wires left. <laughs> Once I get this done, then we can start routing the wires through the car. So I'll meet you when that time comes. One eternity later. Well, that's a hell of a lot more manageable. Wouldn't you agree? The ones I'm going to start with is the ones that go to the trunk. So these four here, I've already removed kick panel up there, sill panel, loosened up this panel here and removed the bottom cushion on the back so I can feed these wires back. So I thought I was gonna, I didn't realize this had like this plastic cover over the harness. 
So I'm like, I am not going through all the trouble of taking all that apart and whatnot. So I'm just gonna run it along the side here. I put a little tape just to keep it in place and that will be good. So this is gonna go up here, right? Like it's gonna sit up there somewhere. And I'm gonna make sure I leave myself enough slack. So it's gonna kind of give myself a little room up there, something like that. And I'll start fishing this down. It's basically just gonna follow the factory harness. So follow that. I gotta be a little careful with this panel here because there is an airbag in there. But I really just need to get the wires kind of fished through just so they a little bit more. There we go. Gotta be careful, but all I need to do is just that. And fish this through. Uh-huh. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's see, I'm just gonna kind of fish them through so the corner here. Ouch. That is... Oh, that's blood. Oh, my car's thirsty for blood. Dang, Mustangs. This one hasn't really had a good human blood. It's only had tree bark. Let's come to the trunk here. Yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, well, so I guess I'm gonna have to run them underneath the carpet here. Uh, hmm. There we go. Little finagling. Got it where I wanted to go. So there. They are just the right length to put me where I need to be. So that was almost perfect. At least that part of the harness is ran. Yeah, and actually this can tuck nicely, just kind of right there like that. Doesn't have to be all crazy, just crazy enough. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, cool. So I can put these panels back on and my car don't look like it's, you know, in 50 pieces. So now to the other part of the wiring that goes to the opposite end of the car is the main power and ground. I've already removed the accelerator, sensor, pedal, whatever the hell. And um, there's a grommet right behind it somewhere. That I'm sure you can't see right there. <laughs> that I fished it through and that's also where, I think that's where I can run the uh, the line for the boost reference, but it's pretty simple. Just to grab it, pull it. Now, I'm not sure, but the power is definitely coming over here. And I'm gonna put it right here on the fuse box. Oh, where the hell is it? You know, right here on one of these, I'll just put a ring terminal and I'll get it right there from the battery. So that'll be that. The ground, I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but I wanna keep it short, short as possible. Somewhere around here, instead of running it all the way over there. All right, day two on the wiring here. So last night I did kind of get a little bit of work done um, after I ended that last clip. And uh, what I did was I ran the power harness coming through the firewall and it's going through this loom here. So, but this is only the positive wire, which is going over here. And I already terminated it to a ring terminal, which will go right there where the battery cable goes. And then back here on the harness, I added uh, the ground cables right here. So the ground cable is gonna go right here and it's gonna go right on that ground stud right back there. So there's a ground stud right there that's gonna go on. So that looks nice and factory. So I like that. And today I've been busy in here, so let's move on to the inside. It looks like a bomb went off inside Buster here. Stuff is everywhere. Panels are all over the place. Man, it smells like a bomb went off in here too, but I just ripped a dang fart before I got in the car. But I got everything tore apart because I wanted to pull this off, the infotainment bezel. And there's a reason for that. So obviously uh, I need to install a switch somewhere in here that will allow me to arm 
the system um, if I decide I don't want to be using it. So, I do have a bunch of switches that I've just had laying around. One from uh, the SHO and just a couple other ones. So I was just looking around at my options. This is one of the newer ones I bought, just a simple little LED, ooh, LED switch, which is nice because remember how the uh, wiring harness down there has wires that go to a uh, LED. Well, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wire that to the LED in the switch. And this is what I'm gonna use to see if everything's working right. I like this one, but eh, it doesn't really look factory. I kinda want, I kinda want it looking nice and factory like it was meant to be in the car. So then I went back to this one. This is the one I had in the SHO when I installed it. And this one just has a nice factory look, nice switch. Um, it has a little green LED light here that um, I think I'm going to roll with this one. And I wanted to put it in the dash area. And I kind of had my uh, sight set on the lower part of the bezel here, which is this little area here, and more specifically, this little panel. Because I don't know if you can buy this panel separate. Does it have its own part number? Oh, it does have its own part number. So yeah, I don't mind drilling a hole in something like this that may cost five bucks. I know these bezels are expensive and I don't really want to mess with it. Not to say I'm planning to get rid of the car, but yeah, you know. So I don't mind drilling into this. So I guess I should uh, get at it then, huh? All right, got a lot of stuff done. So let's let's get caught up here. So, uh, all right, so. Uh, I drilled a little hole down there in this little plastic piece and I fed my wires through. I combined all the wires I needed and um, fed them through. So this is the switch 12 volt and then the positive and negative for the LED. So that's going back through there, under there, back and to the main harness here for the controller. And then, <laughs> oh yeah, that's going to look sweet. I have my switch installed into my panel here. So, and then I verified that, you know, it will fit in the in the hole there, at least it should. I hope it does. So that should be good. So yeah, I'm pretty happy how this wiring is coming along. I'm actually pretty proud. It's a lot better than I was thinking, except this easy wiring job has gotten to a real big job. I mean, I didn't think it was gonna be this involved, but when you wanna run the wires nice and neat and keep a nice factory plus look going on, you gotta get a little bit involved, especially with these newer cars. I mean, you just got, you, like to get the one thing, you have to remove five other things, it's, it's crazy. So, um, oh, one thing I didn't mention was, where am I getting my switch 12 volt source from? Nah, it's pretty simple. This little guy right here. So this is to the uh, 12 volt outlet, you know, cigarette lighter style thing that's in the front cover or the uh, bezel. So, I mean, super simple switch 12 volt source, power ground, so it just makes things easy to be able to just go boop, run a wire here, done. You know, why, why overcomplicate it at this point? Because I've already done that enough. <laughs> mm, I just had the biggest brain fart. You know, I'm just sitting here trying to get everything back together so my car is looking nice again. And I'm like, wait a minute. Before I put this all back, because I don't want to have to really take it all apart again. Let me make sure I have everything good. And I thought about it, I'm like, Hold on, because I'm sitting here looking, I'm sitting here looking at the switch. I'm realizing that there's three terminals and the LED gets power from 12 volt source that you put to the switch. I'm like, oh, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> like, how am I going to send my separate um, LED signal wire from the, uh, the controller harness to power the LED when the LED is already going to get power. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. So I'm sitting here thinking I'm going to have to put a separate LED light for this. And I'm like, no, there's, there, this can't be, that can't be the way. So I had like makeshift hooked up the uh, controller so I can test the signals. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe, just maybe, 
The LED will work if it's just receiving a ground signal from the controller and this, all this wire was, is just a 12 volt source anyway. So I went and hooked, like I just had everything hooked up. I hooked my 12 volt up here, put my ground wire to the controller here and I was like, ah. When I had it hooked up, this light was blinking the same time as this light. So I was like, yes! I knew there had to have been a way, but it sucks because I've already ran this wire, this purple wire, which is just a 12 volt source wire. I don't need any more. So it's just gonna be tucked in the back there. So I just need these three. So I guess I need to clean up my dash here and put things back to the way it was. So I don't look like the damn car just rolled out of the junkyard. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna do that real quick and... Oh good, my interior looks like an interior again. Nice! So everything's pretty much done. This is just kind of like sitting here. I still gotta get the connectors, hook up the switch, but I know all I need to do there and I can just pop that in when I'm ready. Everything down here is pretty much all done for now. The only thing left to do now is get a, uh, a connector two connectors for the pump and the level sensor connected to the wires in the back and then electrical's done. I think this part here in the interior and putting that switch in as simple as it was, I think was the most time consuming out of all of the electrical so far. Well, that was a good day's work. So I'm about to wrap up the video here. Pretty much most of the wiring is done. In fact, I even got a little bit more of like the, you know, just small odds and ends like putting the uh, connector on the pump here and making everything all nice and protect it for moisture and whatnot. Um, I, I still have to do the tank, but that's not a big deal. <laughs> but before I do that, I need to figure out which one of these does what. So I'm not gonna bore you that process in this video that will be done behind the scenes. But with that, it pretty much wraps up the wiring portion of the methanol, water methanol injection system here. In the next video, we get to put everything back together, test, make sure, everything works and then we do the final installation of the um, spacer plate with the nozzles and all that and all will be good until that video finally wraps up here for this video if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up share with everyone you know if you want to see more content like this and you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to the channel keep a look out for next cars creative video